Tera koto te faro o akadir de terrorist. Tera koto na mana hiri. No bai hire bai ki te hui a te ra be. Hire bai ki te le kopapa o te ra. Ko kwe nelson toku ingwa. No re ira. Tera koto, tera koto, tera tato kato. Welcome all, church follow and visitors, to this place of worship, virtual and physical, made sacred by Auckland Unitarians for 122 years. Welcome to those joining us remotely, and to those here in the building, and to those watching the recording at a later time. For those here in person, you all are invited to join us for a cup of coffee or tea immediately following our service. It is our sacrament of hospitality. I welcome you to the danger of this moment. May you find in this community the comfort and the challenge, the love and the energy you need. You are welcome as you are. You find us as we are. My opening words, this morning, I would like to focus on what it means to be a living tradition. As Unitarian Universalists, we sing about it, we proudly proclaim it as what we are, but what does it mean? Most simply put, our beliefs are etched in pencil and not carved in stone but there are consequences. Like being green, being a living tradition isn't easy. It's a big topic. So this is the first of several random musings exploring who we are, how we got here, and where we are being led. My hope is that we might better understand our copa our mission and purposes. My child might if I had her piano. <clears throat> our prophets die for the freedom of faith. We are here in their spirit. We are here to practice and sustain our living tradition. To light a child. Claiming through justice, the key and power of fire. In our free faith, we are here, seeking freedom from despair, the freedom to be loved as ourselves, and the freedom to grow beyond our imagination. We are here gathered in the name of all that we find holy. Let us give thanks for the gift of gathering here. Amen. Now, if you wish, please recite with me the covenant of our congregation. Love is the doctrine of this church, for its voice is the truth, and the sacrament, and its service is to prayer. My reading this morning is by Rosemary Ray 
เดือนกุมภาพันธ์ By no means are Unitarian Universalists perfect. We often fail as much as we succeed. Yet even when we have broken our vows a thousand times, we return to this essential work of justice and liberation for all. We do the work best when we remember what church is and what it is not. Church is not a place to hide. It's not a place to get away from the world. It's not a place where we get to pretend that the lives we live and our particular situations are not terribly complex, often confusing, and sometimes depressing. Church is a place where we stand with one another. Look the world in the eye. Attempt to see clearly, and gather strength to face what we see with courage and yes, with joy. My musing this morning, I've been telling you, it isn't easy being a living tradition. For those who have only worshipped here, you may be under the false impression that all Unitarians are the same, like a rose and a rose is a rose. But no, we are more like a floor arrangement with no two flowers alike. Historically and now, we vary greatly. Modern Unitarians in Transylvania, the birthplace of Unitarianism, are Christian anti-Trinitarians. They celebrate communion. They have bishops. In the 16th century, the Polish Brethren adopted the ideas of an Italian anti-Trinitarian, Faustus Socinus. His ideas eventually made it to England, England and greatly influenced 18th century chemist and natural philosopher Joseph Priestley, considered the founder of British Unitarian. He sought to merge enlightenment rationalism with Christian theism. He eventually had to flee England to the U.S. when a mob burned down at his home. Priestley tried to promote his Socinian ideas to American Unitarians. Still, they didn't listen, as they were too involved in breaking away from their Calvinist forebears and fighting about what a Unitarian had to believe. Unitarians were adamant about right belief. For example, some believed Emerson and Thoreau's transcendentalism stood outside Unitarian thought. The controversy of these various fights lasted 50 years, and to this day it influences who we are and it is at the core of being a living tradition. How is our living tradition manifested today? There are now only 3,600 Unitarians in 173 congregations in the UK and only a handful with more than 100 members. The challenge for the fewer and fewer ministers is breaking the preference 
of many for small congregations. Many congregations survive on their endowments, and the minister does four to five funerals a week. Sadly, Unitarian traditions in the UK are on life support. African Unitarians in England's former colonies are not numerous, but are passionate. Most of their ministers have rejected their evangelical upbringing, but not without some cost. They face prison and even death for their Unitarian values. In the U.S., where UUs are most vital, we see how hard it is to find two Unitarian Universalists who believe alike. In Boston, the denominational home of UUs is America's first Unitarian Church. King's Chapel. It was formerly an Anglican church, but the Bishop of London failed to assign a new priest. They eventually called one of their own, James Freeman, a layman, who no longer held to the 39 articles Anglicans were to accept. After his lay ordination, as the first Unitarian minister in America. He edited the Anglican Book of Common Prayer, removing all references to the, Trin to the Trinity. That book is still in use by the congregation. In all other ways, it's an Anglican church celebrating Holy Communion on Sunday. Predominantly along the East Coast, many congregations are black sheep Christians, still imbued with their Calvinist roots. Those that have universalist roots differ primarily by class from their Unitarian cousins. Unitarians were more urban, highly educated, and upper class. Universalists were more rural and working class. They firmly believe that God is love. Unitarian and Universalist minister, Star King, once described their difference. Universalists believe God is too good to damn them. And Unitarians believe they are too good for God to damn. <laughs> As one moves westward in the U.S., UU churches become more diverse. Many are humans. Some are pagan, earth-centered, Buddhist. This diversity results in various worship experiences, but a few have become commonplace lighting the chalice, joys and concerns, times for all ages, and, morning, and what we call morning tea. <laughs> Continuing west, we come to the Australian New Zealand Unitarian Universalist Association. Its membership includes us, as a small fellowship in Blenheim that meets once a month with a minister and five very different congregations in Australia, most of which are quite small, none have a minister, the largest does not worship and is more like a rationalist society. All these different beliefs and way of, ways of worship they get very hard to explain who we are, what we value, and how we put our faith into action. A living tradition without a holy book, ecclesiastical authority, 
or reveal the truth is a petri dish for chaos. The Unitarian Universal Association to which we are affiliated formed a commission on appraisal to bring some order to who we are. Their 2005 report concluded Three years of study and conversation have not brought us to complete consensus about a common core to our faith. We have found much common ground along the way, respecting the integrity of individual perspective. We offer the following statements as descriptive of who universal, Unitarian Universalists are theologically. We are a ground of faith. We have a faith with roots, however lightly held, that go back 2,000 years and more. <coughs> Unlike other more recently evolving non-traditional faith, ours is solidly grounded in both the realm of history and the realm of ideas. We are an ecological faith. The interdependent web concept of our seventh principle is not new to history. The net of Indra and Hindu and Buddhist thought has been around for several thousand years. But in the West, this vision of interconnectedness has had an uphill struggle to displace a more hierarchical vision of the nature of the cosmos. We have placed the web squarely at the center of our shared world view. We are a profoundly human faith. Whether we see our charge as loving our neighbor or ending, or ending the suffering of all sentient beings, whether our transcendent division is part of our worldview or not. Our primary focus for, for religious action is the well-being of this world. We wrestle with our ideas about human limitation and human power and acknowledge that our understandings are imperfect. We are a responsible faith. At our best, we are able to respond to our deep sense of interconnectedness with both the natural and human world. Whatever our source of religious inspiration, we understand that humanity must take its responsibility for the state of the world seriously. We humans have created many of the ills from which we and all creatures on this planet suffer. We have the ability to ameliorate suffering, if only we find the will to do so. Our diverse sources of religion, inspiration, power, our will to act. We are an experiential faith. We are focused more on experience, our own and that of trusted others, past and present, than beliefs. We do not hold with beliefs that contradict our experience, although we recognize that there are realities that can draw us beyond the present limits of our knowledge. We are a free faith. We are free both of it as individuals and as congregation. We recognize the authenticity and integrity of each individual's life journey and concepts such as building your own theology or composing a faith resonate with it. We are a faith of heretics. We are a mat. We engage with image and story. 
garner any wisdom from any tradition and building bridges between them, making a place where creativity can flourish. We are a relational faith. While we support the individual journey, we ground it in a caring community. Relational language occurs more frequently than any other in core of faith statements shared with the Commission. We are a covenantal faith. We are held together from our Reformation roots by our chosen commitment to each other rather than by creed, ecclesiastical authority, or revealed truth. We began to reclaim that heritage, her, heritage with the language of our principles. More recently, we have come to recognize ourselves as a dialogical faith. The explosion of covenant groups that our myth reflects this. We are reminded of Francis David's admonition over four centuries ago. We need not think alike to love alike. We are a curious thing. Freedom and tolerance have been central to our tradition, at least since the Reformation. The psychological characteristics and values of people drawn to our rights suggest openness is a compelling characteristic. Even if we do not always live our values of tolerance, acceptance, and respect as well as we might, we acknowledge that our perspective is limited and we could be wrong, that we live in the midst of uncertainties, yet we are ever open to new insight. We are a reasonable faith. We do not ask people to check the rationality at the door. And we encourage the practice of disciplined inquiry toward personal and societal assumptions. We challenge idolaters, especially our own. We are positive toward the findings of science while questioning the values that at times motivate choices in that area as in every other. And finally, we are a hopeful faith. We are a faith of possibilities, aspiring to be, though we often fall short, a transformative faith, a justice-seeking we would create a space for the realization of possibility, whether we call it the commonwealth of God or the beloved community. Now, nearly 20 years has passed since the Commission's report. For a living tradition, that is a lifetime. Today's music is the first in a series of three. My third sermon will address the Commission's latest report on who we are today and what vision pulls us further into our faith without certainty. But next week, I will share how we came to determine our present mission and purposes as a living tradition. Now, you used to know our closing song, but you may have forgotten the two. So we're going to play the video, and then you're going to stand and sing it. So, uh, can we first play the video? Please join me as we say the word for extinguishing the challenge. 
Our closest words are by Barbara Peston. Because of those who came before, we are, in spite of their failings, we believe. Because of and in spite of the horizons of their vision, we too dream. Let us go remembering to pray, to live in the moment, to love my Lord, to bow to the mystery. <laughs> okay, here's your discussion group questions. For those who haven't done this before, we get in a group of five, six, to share our thoughts. The question is, what did you hear between those times you took a snooze? How does it affect your faith? Rekha? 